All right, guys. Today we're going to get into voodoo economics. How so-called good numbers look bad. And once again, shout out to all of my intellectual, nerdy people who are leaving these well-constructed comments. Really appreciate you guys. And yesterday, what happened was I have some GoPro cameras and it was a completely bad production day yesterday in terms of using the GoPros because uh, I used to have a car that was more quiet than the Porsche because the Porsche, you know, it's, it's loud. Uh, the engine, which I love, is loud. So this created a lot of interference and stuff. So I'm never going to use those GoPros. Actually, I put them up for sale on Facebook Marketplace just before I started this video, because going forward, I can't keep I can't use stuff like that. It, it no longer fits into the production scheme that I'm trying to do with Mac Daddy Media, because uh, like yesterday, all of those videos came out crappy. Let's just put it that way. They came out crappy. Uh, I got a lot of complaints. So we're not using the GoPros for anything. And what I'm probably going to do today is order a brand new GoPro and new suction cups because I want to attach this to my car. And it, it just wouldn't work out yesterday, man. It just wouldn't work out. I was like, what, what, what is going on? All right. So yeah, no more GoPro videos with the, cause it's a GoPro four, I think it's a GoPro five or six. And these cameras are five, six, seven years old. So I will probably go ahead and get a new GoPro and see how that works. And I'll test it out before I post any video because man, folks were like losing their minds. They were like, man, you sound terrible. You sound horrible. And you know, I've been making videos for YouTube. So typically when I, do a video i don't really watch it i'll process it but i don't watch the whole thing so i didn't really know that it was that bad so we will not be doing that again we will not <laughs> it's just terrible all right so let's get into voodoo economics now right now there's a lot of numbers being thrown out about the national debt we literally added a trillion dollars to the national debt in December, the month of December. It typically took multiple years to add trillion, a trillion or trillions of dollars to the debt. So the repo and the money printing process is going crazy. And one of the things that you would hear is that's not that bad. That's not that bad. I'm like 30, cause you know, it's, 30 plus trillion dollars worth of national debt. That's where we are, right? And if you look at what happened to Japan, when Japan's national debt began to exceed its gross domestic profit, that's when Japan ran into a lot of problems. And Japan's gross national profit was like five trillion and they had $10 trillion worth of debt. So we still got a little wiggle room just a little, a little wiggle room, but not much before we start running into the same problems that Japan ran into where Japan had the lost decade. So I was telling you guys I was going to be on top of the economic numbers. And just like I predicted, unemployment went up. Now it didn't jump up. It went from 3.9 to 4, 3.9% to 4%, right? These are voodoo economic numbers because I feel that real un unemployment, because here's the thing, they don't count you if you're not looking for a job. There's a lot of people out here and we're going to really get into this because these are indeed voodoo numbers because there's something really, really strange going on in the economy. There are people who are looking, who, who are working part-time, who are looking for 
full-time work and they can't find it. I want you to again, right now, unemployment is extremely low. Everyone's desperate to hire, but there are a number of people who are working part-time jobs who cannot find full-time employment in this current economic cycle. They're struggling to find full-time employment. So this, this is what I'm talking about, the voodoo and voodoo economic numbers. Because if you look at the overall government printed numbers, it's not that bad. But just like in the video, because these parts of the video did come out well, where I was doing the voiceover talking about how malls in rich areas are not going to disappear. I've said this for years. Malls in areas that have uh, high six-figure jobs, luxurious households, and good schools, they're going to continue because, like I said, uh, going to the malls the other day, it was just like going to Greenbrier back in the day. It was the same type of activity. It was the same attendance, and people were like literally pulling up and pulling off, pulling up and pulling off, right? Because they were going to the mall. So with the voodoo numbers, if you just, like I said, if you look at the topical numbers, you will miss a lot of pertinent data. Now, all of these malls that are in the bedroom communities are suffering massive closures because they don't have those three elements that they need to be successful. Now, one of the things that I am finding to be extremely interesting is this thing where there are people who are in the part-time, who, who have jobs, they work part-time and they can't find full-time jobs. That is very, very interesting. It's deeply intriguing for a person who wants a full-time job and they can't find it. And there are several videos on YouTube talking about people who are working these part-time shifts, who are working these crazy swing shifts, these crazy hours, they couldn't get benefits. Uh, it, it just made life, because essentially if you're a part-time worker, you're kind of on call. You don't have the same consistent schedule. You have a schedule based upon the needs of the company, which can pretty much wreak havoc on your life. Because there was this one girl on the special on YouTube. She worked two part-time jobs and the girl was working like crazy hours and to keep both her jobs, which came up to one full-time job, she was working, she was available like 80 hours a week but she was only working 36 hours. And you know, it made it time for her, it made it hard for her to schedule her life. It made it hard for her to hang out with friends. She was working seven days a week. Maybe she'll go in on this day. She would work a four hour shift. Maybe she'll go on this day, she'll work a six hour shift. Maybe she'll do uh, two 12s on these days, the, the peak the busy days. So once again, what you're going to see during this global reset is the people who don't have skill sets are going to begin to really fall off the ladder. Because essentially, once again, if you have low income, you don't have a money problem. You have a skill set problem because there are plenty of six figure jobs out there, but people don't have the skill sets for those jobs. There's a lot of jobs out there where they, they they're, if, if they could find the people, they were hire them. And this is one of the reasons the HB visa, why they're important all this talent, because um, typically what we're seeing as we go forward in this global reset is the perishing. Like I'm, I'm passing a house. I don't know if you won't be, well, you might be able to see parts of it. And this is something that's very interesting house with the story. This is a house that was in my, I'm in my old neighborhood. And this is a house that sits on five acres in the middle of mansion land. There are literally mansions all around here. 
And I did a video on it and I had a lot of real estate investors lose their minds saying I didn't know what I was talking about because if you check the property records, you will see that this house is in the name of the LLC. And if you look at through all the transactions, there is no loan on this house. Whoever bought that house paid cash for it. And what they're trying to do, and this is another sign, like once again, Google the home prices in zip code 30327. Now, during the, I was over here during the Great Recession. Home building did not stop. Didn't stop. It slowed down, but it didn't stop. Uh, what, what the thing they love to do over here is find a ranch house sitting on two acres, knock it down and build a mansion. That, that's, the, that's the playbook around here. Because these people have more money than they know what to do with. So they will take a perfectly good house that you could easily buy and live in, knock it down and build their dream home. And this bad boy is for sale. That's very interesting. Because uh, like it's been a while since I've been over here. But during the global reset, you're going to see, just like what I showed with the malls yesterday, uh, these malls, and you go in these malls, they don't have empty stores. You go to a Greenbrier or South DeKalb Mall or Stonecrest, there will be many empty spots. Now that perimeter, there's a waiting list. If there's a store in Perimeter Mall that's closed, it's because they're doing a build out. Because if someone moves, that spot rents out immediately because Perimeter Mall, as I showed you, gets incredible foot traffic. It gets incredible foot traffic in the day of e-commerce. Because uh, once I get to the training and how to look at the numbers a little different, because right now you're getting voodoo economic numbers. You know, 30 trillion. I mean, the national debt, if they were being real, could be $40 trillion. And our GDP is, I'll look it up, but I think it's 25, maybe 30. So we're entering the danger zone. Whenever a country's national debt exceeds its GDP, because if our GDP is 25 trillion and we have a national debt of 30 trillion, we're in the danger zone. We're in the danger zone. And that's not good because what's gonna happen is debt. Let's talk about debt. When you have debt, debt drags on your ability to be productive because you have to service that debt. Let's take an average American couple. Let's take this dude named Jody and his wife named um, Sarah. Jody and Sarah, they have 2.5 kid, kids. Jody and Sarah have a mortgage, debt. They have two car payments, debt. They both went to school, so they have student loan payments, debt. All right, the car payments, the student loan payments, and the credit card payments are a loan is one of the reasons that Jody and uh, Sarah will never be rich because all their money is going to serve as debt. And when you have that same situation with a country where a lot of this country's excess funds are going to service debt, that money cannot be going somewhere else. And once you put yourself in the position where your money is servicing debt on a larger scale, because like me, I have very, very small debt in relation to my income. Uh, on my credit report, my utilization across the board is 1%, and that's only recent because I started actually trying to play the credit game a little bit, because uh, I, I, I don't even have a car that is 10% maxed out. I only have a car that's 5% maxed out because I know that having a lot of debt and having obligations and stuff could impede my ability to make moves to go ahead and 
do things to grow my business because essentially without debt, I'm in the position to make moves. I'm in the position to do things. I'm in the position to buy, like in my business, if I had to spend a hundred thousand dollars for my business, I could do it. I could do it because I leave a lot of cash money in the bank for business purposes. So, because one of the things as an entrepreneur, you don't want to be in a position where your business can't get the money it has or it needs funding. Because uh, I'm going to do a, a really, you know, I'm going to touch on it just a little bit here, but I'm going to do a whole video on uh, the corporate game talking about this. Everyone on YouTube will have you feeling that getting debt or quote as they call it funding I saw a YouTube commercial that was very disturbing because I know better it was talking about going out and getting a car in your business name using interest-free funding and renting your car on Turo that is a very bad ideal that is a very bad ideal because once you go out and get a car that part's easy the hard part is you don't know what your utilization will be on Toro. So you can go out, get this car in your business name, and once you get this car in your business name, you're gonna have to get commercial insurance, which ain't cheap. Commercial insurance is two and a half to four times more expensive than your personal experience, uh, your personal insurance. So you can go ahead and get this car, get this new liability, AKA an asset, and then you now have the car payment and now you have the insurance payment and that bad boy ain't renting out. I, once again, I will say that is something you want to be very careful. If you're not in a market that's very hot for Toro, such as uh, Las Vegas, some, you know, some areas in around Disneyland that are very close in Florida, that's close to Disneyland, you could be taking a very bad risk as someone who's actively in the car rental business, as someone who's seen the numbers, and it's, it's just, you, you, you can be taking the risk. Because, I mean, literally these people are talking about going out and getting credit and credit cards and using this to start your business. Now, I have never started a business based on a loan. I've never started a business based on credit. I don't even know what that is. So I cannot intelligently speak on starting a business with uh, credit because it's something I haven't done. I've not done it because it is very, very dangerous. Because one of the things that you want to do is to get your business started, to get cash flow, to see if your business is viable, and then you have cash flow because th this was my plan for the car rental business. I was going to have a basis of cars. And then once I had cash flow and consistent cash flow, I was going to go to the bank, get a line of credit and buy more cars. But since uh, that didn't work out, I'm not going to do that because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any financial sense. It doesn't make any economic sense to do that when the car rental business, in my opinion, is a very bad business unless you can do it at scale and scale is 200 300 400 cars and once again it left a very bad taste in my mouth so i just don't want to invest the money in a business that i don't like but once again that's enough for that but with these voodoo numbers and let's go ahead and talk about the um economy and the jobs now i predicted in december that the jobs numbers were going to go up. The unemployment numbers was gonna go up. And that was right. Now, why are the unemployment numbers going up? Because the economy is cooling off. I predict that we will be in a recession in 2023. And I also predict that the stock market, compare it to what it's gonna do in 2023, it looks good right now because the stock market got hit 
crypto got hit because fundamental real market real economic marketplace forces are starting to show up see here's the thing and once again a little bit on the stock market the stock market is its own economy it has a set of systems and manipulations built into it where you can make money if the stock is up you can make money if the stock is down you can make money holding on there there are so many ways to make money in the stock market and that's why it's its own economy because take GameStop. It is a business that is literally dying. It is literally dying. And they use GameStop, GameStop as a proxy in a tug of war between huge hedge funds and retail investors. It was just caught up in a proxy fight. None of, not based upon its real economic marketplace value and its real economic viability. Uh, there used to be a GameStop in my neighborhood, a wealthy neighborhood. It closed. It closed. Because once again, this is something else that's going to uh, happen. Demographics age out. So a lot of people who are play playing these games, like once again, the matriculation. When I was a kid, we used to go to video arcades. I mean, it was nothing to spend hours and hours playing Donkey Kong, playing Centipede, playing Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. There were places that had these machines where you go in, you give a guy behind the booth $5, he'd give you $5 for quarters, and you go out and you play until all your quarters were gone. How many video game arcades exist today? How many? I'm quite sure in some areas there's a few, but literally when I was a kid, they were everywhere. So as the demographic ages out, uh, I like once again, let's go with Apple computer. Uh, my first iMac for YouTube, um, it had a CD-ROM drive in it, in the side. And Apple moved away from that and all of their software now comes from the cloud. So what happened is the iMacs got smaller and thinner because they didn't have to put the CD-ROM drive in. So as the demographics age out, we're gonna have kids who are gonna be playing different kind of games. There will be different kind of arcades. So like I said, GameStop is not gonna be around in 20 years. It's just not because the demographic of people who are going and buying cartridges. Now, I feel there will always be a vintage game market, people who like vintage games, who will buy the console, who will buy the cartridges because they're collectors. That market's never going to die, but that market's never going to be huge. It's never going to be huge. So one of the things that you will consistently see with the demographics, because this is some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about in the training, because like I was at the mall and it's just the nerd in me that I was like, okay, all of these young people and these cheap cars are going to the mall. That's very interesting. And they're shopping in a neighborhood that they can't afford to live in. It was really interesting. You know, just looking at the demographics, looking at uh, who was showing up, who was shopping. Like I saw people and just based upon the way that they were dressed, based upon what they were driving, based upon their hairstyles, I knew that these folks did not live in Sandy Springs. There is like, there's a club down here called Johnny's Hideaway. And if you wanna see old school Sandy Springs people, go to Johnny's Hideaway, like 7 p.m. Wednesday night, and from seven to 10, you will see a lot of old established residents of Sandy Springs up in there. And then about 10, 10, 30, the younger crowd starts to come in and they, the audience just completely switches. They change the music and everything. But there is a certain look that Sandy Spring Money has that I, I'm very familiar with it because I know who lives in this neighborhood, who doesn't. Just based on the way they dress, based on what they're driving. Now, you could have someone around here driving an economy car who lives in this neighborhood who could be a millionaire. 
But I guarantee you there's going to be certain things about this person that are going to just show up to the to um, display their status in the neighborhood. But the voodoo numbers are coming. Now, we're going to see if unemployment goes up in February. Because once again, I feel that unemployment didn't go up 0.1%. I think unemployment went up significantly higher, but one of the things that you have to understand is our government lies to us. They never give us the full picture, and this is to keep people from panicking. Because like I said, I wanna get home, I'm gonna do uh, some research because I feel the national debt may be higher than 30 trillion. I'm not sure, I don't have my numbers because I'm gonna get my numbers before I speak on that, but I wouldn't be surprised if the national debt was higher than that, was just significantly higher than that. And once again, with these voodoo numbers, you cannot trust these voodoo numbers, and this is why you gotta do your own independent analysis. I'm gonna look at unemployment for January, I'm gonna look at unemployment for February, I'm gonna look at unemployment for March. And if each month those numbers go up, this is going to set the die for 2023. Because if unemployment continues to go up from January to December, and as we're moving into some strange territory, because like, once again, keep your eye on that number of people who are working part-time jobs, but can't find a full-time job. That's very interesting in a supposedly super low unemployment situation that is very interesting in, you know, there's all of these employers, because here, here's the thing. The jobs that employers are trying to fill are hospitality jobs. This would be restaurant workers, hotel workers. These are not highly desirable jobs. So that's one of the reasons, because even in a good uh, economic situation, these jobs have high turnover, because no one wants to be uh, a waitress for the rest of their life. No one wants to be uh, you know, Uber, um, Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart, numbers are down, numbers are down. So these, I'm gonna call it, to me, to me, these are crappy, jobs to me they're just they're crappy jobs and one of the things that i really talk about and this is wow is you got cars coming this way then you got people who may or may not turn and they'll wait until they get just down here to turn on their turn signal so you don't know if they're going to turn but there's a ton of crappy jobs in the economy crappy uh, there's no career path now these jobs are one of the, this is you know with the pandemic and everyone experiencing time freedom and getting a check from the government in the form of a stimulus check or in the form of enhanced unemployment this has changed the more of america so one of the things I have noticed that customer service absolutely sucks. Like right now, I am working on a few things that I've been working on since October. I've been working on this stuff since October. And part of it is I am working with people who, you know, I got one insurance uh, uh, who, who's Johnny on the spot. He emails me, he updates me, he lets me know what's going on. The rest of them, dragging their feet, dragging their feet. So this is another thing. You have a lot of people who don't want to do their job. It's a very, very interesting situation that we're in right now. Really, really interesting. So, but once again, this is the thing to look at because if unemployment was so low and there was a ton of jobs, why are people who are working part-time jobs are stuck in that cycle why you know if you could just go ahead and like go to this other job and get full-time hours quit the part-time job and make more money why wouldn't you there's a reason 
There's a reason the economy is slowing down. Or I should say the economy is going back to normal because we have lived in an exaggerated stimulus-based economy for two years. So we lived in a phantom, a phantom economy, a zombie economy. It wasn't the real economy that was acting upon real marketplace forces. Now, stimulus money's gone. Now, Congress just passed another trillion dollar bill. So as long as we have stimulus money coming into the economy, the traditional economy will behave and act like the stock market where real marketplace forces don't matter, don't come into play, are not key in the, the performance of the economy. So this will create a lot of bad actors who will come in and try to manipulate the situation to make some money. Just like the retail investors in the hedge funds for GameStop stock. So once again, I'm gonna keep my eye on what Congress does because if there's another wave of stimulus, all this is going to do is delay the inevitable. It's just going to delay the inevitable. It's going to uh, keep it, keep us where we are, keep us um, static, keep us from actually getting into that position where we can have a true recovery. That's gonna be the issue. We're gonna be in a situation where as long as we have stimulus money, we have manipulation, we have padding of the economy, we cannot get to a real, once again, a real recovery because we keep having all of this manipulation in the economy. Because once again, go ahead, don't take my word for it, do the research of people who work part-time jobs who are struggling to find full-time jobs. Struggling. And that right there is kind of wild. But if you look at the real numbers, if you look at the real economy, it makes sense because that tells me that there are not that many jobs for these people out there. It's not that many jobs. And that's the reality. That's the real economy. So once again, to the nerdy tribe, because you know, we're not gang members because I was gonna like nerd gang, you know, because sometimes I like to watch CJ on twin on 32s and they got the 32 gang gang. And you know, it, it sounds better than it is, but we're not a gang. So uh, I'm gonna be coming up with some merch. I'm gonna be coming up with some things for the Institute of Economic Thought. Uh, I've gotten, you know, I haven't responded to anybody because I've been busy, but I've gotten some replies from the nerdy folks who appreciate someone speaking out on their behalf. So I'm gonna keep speaking out because, um, you know, when I was doing these videos talking about how Atlanta used to be, one night I got really, really sad. I got really, really sad because I'm like, man, this place used to be dope. And it, it's just not what it used to be. It's just not. So uh, I will, once again, I will not be <laughs> doing any more uh, GoPro videos using those cameras because the audio quality is trash. And one of the things is like this, it should work in the BMW because the BMW is more quiet than the Porsche because the Porsche is loud because of the exhaust. But I'm going to continue to use the Sony's and I'm going to get much better video. I'm going to get much better audio. So that's what's going on. All right. So Super Bowl Sunday is next Sunday or this coming Sunday. So what we're going to get into after Super Bowl Sunday, I'm going to launch a new product, some new training. And once again, if you're in the corporate toolbox or you're in the corporate papers, you will get this new training. You don't have to do anything. And um, yeah, so let me know your thoughts about voodoo economic numbers.
because the voodoo is real the voodoo is significant and once again our government lies to us just kind of like dave ramsey you know a lot of people got really upset but i actually listened to the dave ramsey show and i've actually heard dave ramsey say some stuff because he was on a call and he was talking to this couple and they made like 90,000 and he was talking about, you know, if you do this and this in 10 years, you'll be a millionaire. And I was like, no, Dave, that is absolutely wrong. Cause I'm getting ready to do some um, videos on why everybody wants to leverage a small amount of time, a small amount of money into a big payday. So we're gonna get into that. So that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.